In this video, we are going to study how to solve for the mixed strategy, Nash Equilibrium of Strategic Games. By the end of this video, you should be able to solve for the mixed strategy, Nash Equilibrium of a Strategic Game. To begin, let's review the steps to solve strategic games. First, start by setting up an appropriate diagram of the game whether that be an extensive form of the game or a strategic form. Second, define each player's strategy set. Third, look for strictly dominant strategies. If players don't have strictly dominant strategies, proceed by eliminating dominated strategies. If iteratively eliminating dominated strategies does not lead you to a solution, the next step is to find pure strategy Nash equilibria of the game. Finally, find the mixed strategy equilibrium of the game. Note that if you find that a game has either no pure strategy Nash equilibria or more than one pure strategy Nash equilibrium, you can count on there also being at least one mixed strategy Nash equilibrium of the game, as long as the game is finite and has a finite number of players. John Nash proved this and won the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economics for this contribution to the field. The easiest way to learn to solve for a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium is to work through an example, so that's what we'll do. You may recall from an earlier video that this game has two pure strategy Nash equilibria, top left and bottom right. Because this game has two pure strategy Nash equilibria, we know that it also has a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. The reason why we know this is that it is a curious fact that most finite games have an odd number of Nash equilibria. So, how do we find the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium of this game? The first step is to assign a probability to each strategy for each player in the game. Let's let player 1 play top with probability p and bottom with probability 1 minus p. Similarly, player 2 will play left with probability q and right with probability 1 minus q. Remember that the probabilities of the possible strategies for each player must sum to 1. The next step is to calculate the probability of each possible outcome of the game. Because each player chooses their strategy independently, the probability of each outcome is the product of the probabilities of the strategies that make up the outcome. This means that the probability of top left is p times q, the probability of top right is p times the quantity 1 minus q, the probability of bottom left is the quantity 1 minus p times q, and the probability of bottom right is the quantity 1 minus p times the quantity 1 minus q. The next step is to calculate each player's expected payoff from each strategy. To do this, take the sum of each player's payoff from a given outcome multiplied by the probability of that outcome. For example, player 1's expected payoff from top left is 3 times p times q. Player 1's expected payoffs from top right and bottom left are 0, and player 1's expected payoff from bottom right is 2 times the quantity 1 minus p times the quantity 1 minus q. Player 1's total expected payoff is the sum of their expected payoffs from each outcome, which is 3 times p times q plus 2 times the quantity 1 minus p times the quantity 1 minus q. Similarly, player 2's expected payoff is 2 times p times q plus 3 times the quantity 1 minus p times the quantity 1 minus q. The next step is to determine each player's best response function. To do this, we will start by graphing each player's expected payoffs from each of their pure strategies. If player 1 always plays top, then p equals 1 and player 1's expected payoff is 3 times q. Similarly,
Player 1's expected payoff from always playing bottom is 2 times the quantity 1 minus Q. Note that player 1's expected payoffs from playing top or bottom are a function of Q, the probability with which player 2 plays left or right. If we graph these expected payoffs, we find that these lines cross at Q equals 2 fifths. From this information, we can determine player 1's best response function. If Q is less than 2 fifths, then player 1's expected payoff is higher from playing bottom. So that is their best response if player 2 plays left with any probability less than 2 fifths. At Q equals 2 fifths, player 1's expected payoffs from playing top and bottom are the same. So they are indifferent between playing top and bottom. For values of Q greater than 2 fifths, player 1 should play top since their expected payoff from top is greater than their expected payoff from bottom for these values of Q. We can work through the same process for player 2. We find that these two lines cross at P equals 3 fifths. Thus, player 2's best response function is to play right if they believe that the likelihood that player 1 will play top is less than 3 fifths play either left or right if p equals 3 fifths, and play left if p is greater than 3 fifths. We can now find the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium of this game by graphing each player's best response functions. Each player's best response will be characterized in terms of their choices of p and q. For player 1, Choosing a P of 0 corresponds to the pure strategy of always playing bottom, while choosing a P of 1 corresponds to the pure strategy of always playing top. For player 2, choosing a Q of 0 corresponds to always playing right, and choosing a Q of 1 corresponds to the pure strategy of always playing left. Any value of P or Q between 0 and 1 corresponds to each player playing a mixed strategy in which they play each pure strategy with some positive probability. For player 1, any value of Q less than 2 fifths, player 1 should play the pure strategy of bottom. For any value of Q greater than 2 fifths, player 1 should always play top. And for Q equal to 2 fifths, player 1 is indifferent between bottom and top. So any value of P is a best response to player 2 playing left with probability 2 fifths. We now have player 1's best response function. For player 2, if P is less than 3 fifths, then player 2 should play the pure strategy of right. If P is greater than 3 fifths, player 2 should always play left. And if P equals 3 fifths, then player 2 is indifferent between playing right and playing left, so any value of Q will be a best response to this strategy by player 1. We have now found player 2's best response function. We now have a way to find all of the Nash equilibria of this game. They are the three points where the player's best response functions intersect. Two of them are the pure strategy Nash equilibria of top left and bottom right that we have found previously. The third point of intersection is the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. It occurs when player one plays top with probability three-fifths and player two plays left with probability two-fifths. In working our way through this solution, we have uncovered an interesting characteristic of mixed strategy Nash equilibria. At the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, each player chooses probabilities that just make their opponent indifferent between each of their pure strategies. We can use this insight to develop a shortcut to solving for the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium of a game. To use the shortcut method, we must keep in mind that in a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, each player will choose the probabilities that make their opponent indifferent between their pure strategies. 
to see how this results in a shorter path to the solution to the mixed strategy equilibrium, consider the problem from player one's perspective. Player one wants to choose P in order to make player two indifferent between playing left and playing right. If player one plays top with probability P and bottom with probability one minus P, then player two's expected payoff from playing left is two times P and their expected payoff from playing right is 3 times the quantity 1 minus p. Indifference implies that player 2's expected payoffs from these two pure strategies must be equal in order for player 2 to be willing to play a mixed strategy in equilibrium. Solving for p results in a solution of p equal to 3 fifths, the same solution we found before for player 1's mixed strategy. We can work through the same process for player 2, who wants to choose Q in order to make player 1 indifferent between top and bottom. We find that Q equals 2 fifths, the same solution that we found using the player's best response functions. Thus, in just two steps, we have found the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium of this game. Remember that for this method to work, each player must randomize between their pure strategies in such a way as to make the other player indifferent between their pure strategies. This concludes this video on solving for mixed strategy Nash equilibria. Thank you for watching.